just heard him say, I knew you. I knew you before your mother's womb. I knew you before the anger. I knew you before the fatherlessness. And I knew you before the addiction. My name is Cindy Watson, and this is my story. Um, I was raised in Pueblo, um, Colorado, and I was raised by my mother. Uh, my mother um, raised seven of us. Um, I have, um, she raised six daughters and, and a son. I'm child number five, and um, my dad was from Pennsylvania, and um, my mom is from Pueblo. They would, um, they would tell me how I was a daddy's girl. My mom and dad used to tell us stories at bedtime, and we would go in their bed, a king-size bed, we'd all lay there before bed, and I would lay on my dad's chest while he was telling us bedtime stories, and I loved him. I was a daddy's girl. I was the love child. My mom and dad separated, and they came back about five years later and had me and my siblings, and I had my mom and my dad and my, all my sisters, my older sisters, and they were just giving me all the love. That was from when I was one to three years old, so I had all this love, and my mom and dad got divorced when I was three years old. And then my dad was not in my life. And so, ah, that's, that was a hard time. I was fatherless. And um, I was mean to everybody. I used to beat up boys and girls. I had no friends. I was friends with boys because the girls were afraid of me. Um, and that, that went on and it was, it was really hard. Um, I put up walls. I, I had father figures and I never let them get close because I always would tell them, you're not my dad. And um, teachers, never liked teachers. I didn't even like my mom. I did, I would, she would tell me not to do something. I would do the opposite. Uh, my siblings, I was mean to them. And I just lived with a lot of anger. And um, that, ha that went on for, thank goodness for the church. It kind of mellowed me out a little bit. But um, at, at about fourth grade, we weren't going to church anymore. And about fifth grade, we moved to a whole other environment, a new school, a new community. And I, was, I had to meet a whole, whole lot of new friends. And um, it, I, that's where I experienced some anxiety. I remember having knots in my stomach and just, again, didn't, you know, just missed my dad, still, still angry. And I found some friends. I guess they didn't call them friends. And um, that's when I first, um, I was about 12, 13 years old. And that's the first time I, I tried wine and also smoked marijuana. And uh, it scared me, it scared me, but it also, um, it also numbed me out also and I, I didn't use it I stayed away from it for a little bit until I got to seventh grade and I met my best friends there's seven of them and we're still best friends today we're on a chat and we, we hang out all the time but during middle school we we at the end of our our um, middle school years we were drinking already um, we carried it on until high school graduated together and and then right about I was about 19 years old and me and one of my best friends um, we got an apartment and we had an apartment and everybody used to be at my house everybody at our house and it was a party it was a party house and we were underage but we found a way to get alcohol and um, right around that time it was about 19 20 years old um, it was, I was, my dad came back in our life. He, came, he moved back to Colorado. He got sick. He was, um, he had COPD. And um, by April, my dad was, was gone. And uh, I was happy because he was saved. And he, he was, our conversations were about Jesus. And within that three month time, we, he made up for being gone the 20 years out of my life. So, uh, he was gone though, and I was thankful that he was in heaven, but I was mad again because now I got my dad back and he was gone again. So that's where my drinking got worse. Fast forward three DUIs later, I had a really good job. I lost my job and I was depressed. I was in a really bad relationship. I lived in Pueblo West and I had a, we had a boat, had a car, nice cars, trips and purses and accessories, anything I wanted. And that was during my time when I was, was drinking. But that third DUI, I, I got pulled over on Lehigh. And it was on my way to Pueblo West. And I, was, um, and I was facing the church, the church that I go to now. And I was doing the sobriety test. And, and I had a focus. And I just remember looking at the church. And I seen the cross. And I had remember him being at the church. Um, and, and I just, I was just, I, I, it just, things felt different. Things were just different at that moment. It was, it was my third DUI. And I, and I just, I couldn't believe it. And I got in the back of the, after I took the beat, my breath test, and they put me in the back of the car, they arrested me. And I was in the back of that police car. And I was sitting there. 
And then Christ came. Um, if I could hear it was just the the uh, police walkie talkie, the, the 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 radio. And then all of a sudden, I just heard, I just heard Jesus. I just heard him say, I knew you. I knew you before your mother's womb. I knew you before the anger. I knew you before the fatherlessness. And I knew you before the addiction. I have a plan and a purpose for you. Not to harm you, but to the hope and a future to prosper and that's what I heard and things changed from that point and that was in February and of 2006 three months later and then I died I died to self I died to myself and on May 16th my birthday I said this is my last drink it was my last drink and May 17th was the first day of sobriety for me. And from that point on, things started changing. I started listening to music and it was just so powerful. The spirit was just on me all the time and I was walking in it. One of my life songs is Oceans and it's by Hillsong United. And I remember being at a woman's, a woman of faith. And I remember that they were playing that, that song and it was, you know, I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. And it was music that really helped me connect uh, through the through the worship, and um, it was and then being in church, it was just the worship is is my place. I'm like David, and and I just I, I, I can't help but raise my hands, and I can't help but sing above the crowd, and and I just I feel it. It's a welcoming of 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 the Holy Spirit to move in our life. It really is. It's welcoming the Holy Spirit, and whether it's our house or in church. So music was a, a connection for me that that really had helped me um, connect to God and, and to, to have a stronger relationship with him. So I'm a mental health and a, and a substance abuse therapist. And um, I do groups, I do um, intakes, I, I meet with people individually, I work for uh, problem solving court, sobriety court with people who are, um, who have had DUIs, three DUIs, we try to keep them, not only maintain sobriety, but to prevent rec recidivism. Now we, um, we, we go to court with them bi-weekly, and um, there's, um, it, it's just really to, to keep them um, from getting in trouble with the law and just to, so they can get better. And I get to do that. Now I'm the opposite side of the courtroom. I'm, my friend is the judge, and I work with her and probation and, and other treatment providers to help these individuals get healthy. And uh, it, it's just been, it's been an amazing job and a calling. I'd like to say that it was my calling. You know, God has showed me purpose, and, and, and it was my calling. And he... Um, I just continue, continue the miracles I keep on seeing with clients, you know, getting better. And until we understand that it is demonic, we are not fighting against people. We are fighting against the spirit here. It's a demon, whether it's anger, whether it's it's whether it's a depression, whatever it is, it is a spirit. And we need to fight against that. We know the Bible says trouble is going to come. And, and why do we worry? We know it's going to happen. We need to, be, to get extreme. The enemy's getting extreme coming at us. We need to fight him, and we need to go into this battle. God has given us hands and, and put us ready for battle, and we need to do that by raising our hands. And, Lord, come in right now. God, I need you. When we reach out to the Lord and we're asking God to come into our life, we're not only just asking him to come into our life, but... The devil flees when, when we speak the name of Jesus. So it's a double thing that's going on there. Every morning when I pray, and you know, I, and that's how I fight my battles every day. I pick up my cross and, and, and that's, I don't, pre I prepare for the day. I don't go out spiritually naked and wait for things to happen. I'm all about preventing and preparing. And I start fresh in the morning and I just ask God, Lord, Lord, let your will be done, Father God. I die to self today, Lord. Let your thoughts be my thoughts, Father God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, and and just I just pray those prayers, and and it's just it's just amazing what, what God has done for me. My life verse is Romans eight twenty eight, and eight twenty eight says, and all things work out for the good for those who love Him 
and who are called according to his purpose. Before Jesus, when I had this encounter with Jesus, before my life had changed, um, I was addicted. I was addicted to alcohol. I was bound to anger and, and, and sadness and, and depression. And after Jesus, um, I'm made new. I'm made new. Uh, my desires are reversed. It's all about Him. And He has just come into my life and He has given me a life that um, it's where there's peace and there's joy and there's hope and a future. And I've been sober 17 years now. And the, again, the past is, is, is just a, it's just a part of, of my story. And I know the best is yet to come. I'm just so grateful for it.